Hi and welcome. On today's episode, you're going to be joining Mike Scoby in Sweden, where he's hunting roe deer, which I guess you could say are Europe's equivalent of our own whitetails. And southern Sweden is the Pike County, Illinois of Europe. These are big roe deer that are hunted a couple of different ways. One is spot and stalk, and the other is calling during the rut. Mike is going to do both, and it's absolutely fascinating. And what makes it really interesting is the fact that these little deer respond very much like our own whitetails, especially during the rut. You're not going to want to miss today's episode of Peterson's Hunting Adventures. presents Peterson's Hunting Adventures. Closed captioning provided by Leupold. Well, first day in Sweden is full of surprises. We got up here, we were planning on driving to the hunting lodge uh, with Stefan. It was about a 45 minute hour drive out of Stockholm. Instead, he had some buddies come by and pick us up in a boat. Uh, we're getting the waterfront view of uh, Stockholm and seeing kind of the Swedish shoreline as well as some of the archipelago. Should be an interesting trip. The short boat ride comes to an end at the dock of the hunting estate as the attractive first mate secures the line to the mooring. In uh, the year 1719, uh, Sweden had been at war with the Russians for many years, and uh, the Russians tried to force Sweden to sign a peace agreement with Russia, and to put a lot of pressure on the Swedes, the Russians came over and burned down all the mansions and castles along the east coast. And uh, there was only one or two that was protected. And, the, and Sandemar is one of them. And the theory is that out here was a castle with Swedish soldiers, so they didn't get, dare to get inside. So this is what makes this building so unique. It's pre-1719. And uh, that summer, most of them were burned down by the Russians, except this one. Well, we finally got to Sweden. We're at the estate now, we're getting ready to sight in. Uh, this is Henrik. Call him Hank. Thank you for having us out here. He's the gamekeeper at the operation here. Um, for this hunt, I decided to choose a CZ rifle. It's a Bruno Effect in 308. It's a single shot rifle. It's got uh, very European styling to it. I figured it'd be fitting for this type of hunting if we did some stalking. It's also got the range if we're gonna do some long range shooting across some of these open glades. Went with a Leupold two and a half to eight power scope on it. Uh, it's got the Boone and Crockett reticle, shooting uh, federal ammunition. Also have some Leupold binoculars we're gonna use. I figure it's a perfect combination if we do some stalking or if we get a long shot across one of these open fields. She's right there, yeah. right in that corner where I was aiming. Yeah, that's perfect. That gun looked like it shot good. I mean, sighted it in. That was the first shot on target. Moved yeah. it up, moved a bit too far. Brought it back yeah. in, aiming just at that corner there. Went to the clean target to check it. And yeah. Out of a cold barrel, she's she's dead on. So yeah. I think we're probably good. We're That's really good. Find some Robux? Yeah. Let's yeah. do it. This segment brought to you by Cabela's. Celebrating 50 years as the world's foremost outfitter. The champion introduces the wheelie bird. Compact and light, the two-wheeled frame with the pull handle makes this trap very mobile for all shooters to enjoy. With a 50 clay capacity and a throwing distance of 55 yards, the Wheelie Bird is ideal for the backyard range at an affordable price. It's easy to move, it's easy to store, and best of all, it's easy on my pocketbook. Champion traps and targets. Shoot better, have fun. In this world, there are two kinds of perfection, natural and man-made. When the two come together, it's magic. Mauser Style Extractor for unmatched reliability, the strength and quality of a forged receiver, 
premium hammer forged and lap barrel for industry leading accuracy and long life. Plus the versatility of a single set trigger with two modes, standard hunting trigger and a light target trigger that breaks like glass. CZ USA. Riders expect certain things from a Can-Am ATV. Groundbreaking technology, responsive handling, and the most power in every class. So why would they expect anything less from a Can-Am side-by-side? -side? Introducing the Can-Am Commander, the most powerful rec utility side-by-side -side in the industry with precision handling and the first dual-level cargo box. The facts say it's the most advanced side-by-side -side ever built, but the ride says it all. The Loophole VXR puts a new light on illuminated scopes. Fiber optic technology shines brightly in any condition. Index match lenses and exceptional light transmission extend precious minutes at dawn or dusk. Your choice of five exclusive fire dot reticles and the ruggedness that's the hallmark of every Loophole scope. So go ahead, light him up with the new VXR, only from Loophole. From the producers of Bowhunter TV comes Moose Mayhem, up close and personal action with North America's biggest and most ferocious deer. I don't think he was three feet from me. Call 1-800-260-6397 to get your copy of The Heart-Stopping Chaos for just $14.95. From the reclusive Shearest Moose to Alaska Giants, Bowhunter delivers wide paddle action, stick and string style. If you've ever dreamed of hunting moose, you won't want to miss Moose Mayhem. That was scary. This segment brought to you by CZ USA. We will be driving roughly five minutes to up here. Uh, this area here is where we'll be spending the morning now. Okay. There's a nice wheat field. There's some nice clover fields over here, these parts. Mm -hmm. uh, the wind is from the north. So we will, I'm planning that we are stopping over here mm -hmm. so that we can get around. Uh, because I think that the Robux already by now will be out here on the clover fields feeding. Southern Sweden is known throughout Europe as the place for big road deer bucks. Think of it as the Scandinavian equivalent of Pike County, Illinois. Sprawling wheat and clover fields provide a feast for the local roe deer, who, like whitetails, frequent them in the early morning and late afternoon hours. Roe deer can be hunted from stands, but also by spot and stalk, as Stefan and Mike are doing this morning. During the rut, bucks can also be called to the hunter as well. She's disappeared now. She's probably going down and lying down. The wind's in our face, so we're just going to give it five, ten more minutes and see if we can see him. If we can't, we're going to sneak to that next hill. We can still see back here, but then we can also see that next valley and see if there's another one down there. This is a fantastic field here with all this clover field here. It's perfect. Sweet. I absolutely love it. grain makes it difficult to see the small deer as they feed, but this buck throws caution to the wind as he pursues a hot doe. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good shot. That's a nice robot, that one. Oh, huh? That was cool. <laughs> ah, look at that. Have you wow. seen the thickness of the base? Jeez. Yeah. Thank you. And the eye. Uh -huh. That's a good one. He cheated us. I mean, it didn't look like that big the one we uh -oh. saw him the first time. No, I this is a one. really nice buck. Man, I gotta say, that was exciting. That was a, just as you described, plan came together. I mean, we got in here right at daylight and you had it all on the map, exactly how these you know, fields lay in here and the wind was in our face. And we couldn't apply that any better. It yeah, we was really lucky though. Yeah. And then what were here five minutes, we saw the first doe and the buck with her. And it wasn't 10 minutes more and that other buck came in chasing that doe. Yeah, yeah. Now the only difference was that I was hoping that I was good being uh, out here feeding, but it's a little bit chilly this morning, so yeah. I was probably laying down. So that's the reason why we never saw this buck when we started to walk here. But uh, he was rising up, and when it started getting a little bit warmer, he wanted to go for the ladies. Like I gotta say, that's just like how it happens whitetail hunting in the rut in the back in the United States. I mean, those bucks will ignore everything around them and just focus on the the females and chase them. That's exactly what he was doing. Luckily, she just came right by us and it gave us a great shot. Yeah, yeah, and it was a good shot also. Well, thank you, thank you. You know, never hunting Europe before, I didn't know what to bring as far as a rifle, things like that. But I'm glad I picked this little single shot. For doing the kind of hunting we're doing here, this little CZ Burno effect, it was perfect. I mean, you carry it one-handed, you didn't need to have a sling, it's a nice lightweight rifle that's, you know, for just this kind of sneaking around and stalking, it was a, it's a perfect little gun for it. And I chose this Leupold scope on it, which is not a high-powered scope, it's a two and a half to eight but it's fine in here. I mean, it works good for, you know, the longest shot you're probably gonna take is a couple hundred yards. Exactly. Turn it up to eight power would be fine, but if you're stalking through this stuff and you happen to jump one close, you can have it turn down to two and a half power and give you a, a wide field of view. So, no, I really can't complain. The, the choice being rifle and scope was ideal. The more that I'm looking at him, I'm almost sure uh, it's gonna be a bronze medal, but it can even go up to a silver medal mm. because uh, he's got the length and he's also got the volume, this one. So it's a very nice buck. You know, a lot of times that's like antelope hunting in the American West where you'll you first look at them, they don't look that big and they turn their head and you'll see that they swoop back or they return into the side or, you know, they have a different angle to them. It's neat to be uh, surprised this way, you know, when you walk up and they get bigger as you get closer yep, versus yep. shrinking. So that was a pleasant surprise and yep. my biggest robot. <laughs> so far. So far. <laughs> this segment brought to you by Leupold. This is one generation to the next of the most trusted tree stands in the industry. A history of innovative design and technology passed on from father to son. Certified to TMA standards for your safety. Quality engineered by an American company founded on the tradition of hunting from high places. The new Summit Switchblade. It's everything you've come to expect from the most trusted name in the tree stand market. What if you had the power? To pick your spot. Not just a spot. The invasion is now. Botek, refuse to follow.
Introducing Vendetta, the only bow-mounted laser rangefinder. Minimize movement, maximize success. Vendetta, only from Leupold. This segment brought to you by Federal Premium Ammunition. Every shot counts. We're lucky, right now the rut's going on. Uh, we're gonna go try some calling. Evidently Roebuck respond really well to calls. Uh, like I said, they're in the middle of the rut right now, so we're just gonna give it a try, go in a few hundred yards, set up and call, and then move in about five minutes, do it again, go a couple hundred yards, set up and call. We got a little bit of a windy day here, so they can't hear very far. It's dense forest. We're just gonna keep working our way along this ridge line and see what we can pick up. The call of the female roe deer sounds more like a bird than a deer, but it captures this young buck's immediate attention. Running almost up to the hunters, the female slips among the trees. The buck, aware of the hunter's presence, decides to follow despite the potential danger. This behavior is true of all ungulate species during the breeding season. This is not happening. This is not happening. That was unreal. Huh? That was unreal. And he was right here. <laughs> I mean, to be able to get so close into them here in the forest. Yeah. <laughs> that was cool. That was a neat experience. He was a young guy, though. Yeah. yeah. I guess that he was roughly two years or something like that. Yeah. But I mean, to, that they are coming in oh, like sure. this. He was right here. He wasn't, you know, 15 <laughs> yards, tops, <laughs> 10 meters. Fantastic. Yeah. Sure, we just walked up this hill. I mean, not 200 yards from the truck where we had lunch. We jumped a buck coming up here. We get to the top of the hill, there's a female, and there's another buck dog in it. I mean, it's, it's a good day. It's, yeah. it's prime time. I mean, that they're kind of getting so close, so yeah. that, that's very, very unusual to get that. <laughs> it's only a pity that you uh, well, actually, it was lucky that we'd never, that it was not a big buck. Mm -hmm. It would be you know, so embarrassing if you had missed him. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the call of the female then. Right? Yeah. That's a small car you're doing yeah. there. Three times. Yep. And then you can do so that uh, if, um, uh, that's, that's uh, the contact noise mm -hmm. that they're making. And this, That's the noise they're making when there is a buck running around and chasing her. Okay. So that's something that you normally I start with the with the easy one mm -hmm. to get the buck coming and, and not um, start too violent. So start a little bit soft with the contact call, mm -hmm. and then after a while, then I go over to that when the, when when it sounds like there is another buck in the area. Mm -hmm. Because the thing that we will do now is that when we are walking here, we will be looking for sign where the, he's got his home range. You see on this little tree, for mm -hmm. example, he's been... Uh, Raking it? Yeah. Did you see him rake this tree? Yeah, exactly. Out exactly. Stop and exactly. Ripped it up a bit? So that's the places that we will be looking for. <clears> so when we have some hot spots that he'd been uh, going with the antlers, that's where we will be sitting and calling, and then we will be doing the... the, the uh, when, he's, when there's another buck pushing him. Are they pretty territorial? Do they have a little home range that yeah. they stay in? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And they are starting to make out this territory already in May. Uh -huh. But uh, the closer to the rut season, then of course the more they are defending the area. Okay. 
And then, then sometimes if it's an old clever buck, it's also helping a lot if you have a bush and sh uh, wrap in there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Then he's coming like a yeah, that's reptile. Just like how we do whitetails. I mean, it's very, very similar to yeah, whitetail. Yeah, yeah. I believe a, a small buck like this one, if I would have started to make that more aggressive noise, he would be scared and think that, oh, that's the big buck he, close here. So then he would be taking off instead. Lick a branch above it and kind of exactly. mark their territory the same way. That's cool. very much dissimilar. We will be probably now in a range here of half an acre. We will be finding 10, 15 places like this. Yeah. Okay. This is home spot here. Just make them all over. Yeah. And the other thing is that uh, they are they, they are starting to mark the territory in May. Mm -hmm. And uh, normally a big roebuck, he will of course have a big area, and then there will be small, uh, smaller bucks that he is allowing to enter some parts of his area. Mm -hmm. But when there is a female that is on the heat, he will still be the one that is can feel that and pushing away the small ones. That's his dominant area. Exactly, exactly. So you could see on this one he was walking a bit, and the slightest chance he's got for a female is after her. This segment brought to you by Smith & Wesson. In this world, there are two kinds of perfection, natural and man-made. When the two come together, it's magic. Mauser Style Extractor for unmatched.